I've got a great idea. Come on, let's get started. Look around, find your inspiration. Take that step, use your imagination. You don't need to go direct, the road may not lead where you expect, cause it's the trip. Hi, I'm Tommy DePaola. Want to tell some stories? Come on in. Gabe is making a surprise for me. I wonder what it is. I love surprises. Come on, let's go see. Oh, hi, Gabe. Ta-da! Oh! Chocolate acorns. Oh, Gabe, you made these. They look delicious. Ow! Gabe. These are real acorns covered with chocolate. Nothing but the best for you, Tommy. Uh, I'm sure they're great, but acorns are a little too hard for my teeth. This is how you toughen up the old incisors. Thanks, Gabe, but I think I'll let you eat them. Don't mind if I do. Ah, that brings back memories of my first acorn. I was a baby and my mom soaked the shell in milk. Isn't it wonderful how the taste or smell of a certain food can bring back memories of people and places? I think that eating or making food is its own special kind of storytelling. When you make a meal or tell a story, it's all about what ingredients you add. This is so true, Tommy. Ah, buongiorno, strega nona. Let me tell you a story. Each year in our village of Calabria, there is a great fair, and the high point is always the great cake contest. Every person in the town would make a cake and hope the judges would choose it as the best. Mmm, someone's making a cake. Mm. Yes, but it's not for you, Big Anthony. It's for the great cake contest. See, si, see, si, Big Anthony, I shall bake you a nice cake tomorrow. <gasps> Thank you, Streganona. Ah. <laughs> I may win this year, Streganona. Mm. After all, my father started teaching me about baking when I was little. Mm. Every time I made this recipe, I remember baking with Papa. Ah. I would spill flour all over myself, and Papa would call me his little baby flour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, my grandmother taught me how to cook. Whenever we added a pinch of anything, she would pinch my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> we used to make uh, this cake together. And she'd add a pinch of cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, and a pinch of pampalona! <laughs> <laughs> oh, these aren't just cakes, Trigonona. These are memories, mm. stories to eat. Ah, yes. Mm. Bambalona and I went on baking and sharing our stories until our cakes were finally done. Uh, aren't you going? We're going to the cake contest. Oh, Big Anthony's too busy with his rake contest. Ah. Besides, he doesn't even have a family recipe. Uh, Bambalona! Oh, that's what? okay, Streganona. She's right. I don't have any family recipes like you two. Hmm. Um, good luck. Maybe I'll join you later. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao! Bye! So, Bambalona and I went to town leaving Big Anthony all alone. I really want to enter that contest so I can show up that show-off Bambalona. Oh, but what can I do? I, I don't have any family recipes. But I do have a family! And so, Big Anthony decided to invent his own family recipe. My father always wears a white shirt, so I'll use flour. Ha-ha. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, my, my mother laughs, and, and when she laughs, she sounds just like a chicken. So I'll add eggs. All of them. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and my grandfather loved sausage. It was his favorite food. <laughs> so, I'll add sausage. Ha-ha! <laughs> yes! This is gonna be the best cake ever. <laughs> Big Anthony worked all day on his family cake mix, but when he was almost done... Mmm, something's still missing. Oh. I know what's missing. I need something that reminds me of Aunt Sophie. <laughs> but that bottle looks just like her. <laughs> this is gonna be the one cake the judges will never forget. <laughs> <clears throat> the winner of this year's great cake contest is... Wait! <laughs> I have a cake for the contest. Uh, Big Anthony! <laughs> well, just in time. Uh, let's have a taste, hmm? Hmm. Why, this is delicious. It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, uh, ribbit. Ribbit. Hmm. Ribbit. Ribbit. The <gasps> judge has turned into a frog. What did you do? Uh, I don't know. I just took some ingredients out of Streganona's kitchen and... <gasps> oh, I know what you did, uh, but don't worry. I'll take care of this. Uh, Big Anthony make the cake. The judge, he ate it then. He turned into a frog and now turned him back again. Huh. Well, <laughs> that was unusual. Ribbit. <laughs> 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 that big Anthony, he really takes the cake, eh, Tommy? <laughs> Ciao! Ciao, strega nonna! <laughs> big Anthony was starting a family tradition with his cake recipe. Does your family have any special meals like that? Meals that remind you of good times and close friends? Well, here's something that might whet your appetite. Take a look. Every picture tells a story. What story do you see? Most of us don't think of storytelling when we're eating or cooking, but lots of meals have great stories behind them. Think about Thanksgiving. Every year, we sit down to eat the traditional turkey dinner, and we're reminded of the feast that the pilgrims and the Native Americans shared hundreds of years ago. One family I know has a pasta sauce they make every Christmas. Each family member has a moment alone with the sauce where they add their own secret seasonings. It's a sauce that can only be made when the whole family comes together. And these are the ingredients for a dish that has a personal story behind it. You see, in my family, it was a tradition that on your fifth birthday, you were allowed to do one thing that you really wanted to do. <laughs> and I wanted to cook my own dinner. My parents tied an apron around me and placed me on a kitchen chair that then stood on either side of me while I cooked. I used this very frying pan. My dad was probably holding a fire extinguisher, I'm not sure. Anyway, this is the dish I made. It's called a Popeye. And here's how you make it. First, you cut a hole out of a piece of bread. And then you fry it in a little bit of butter. Turn it over, and then crack an egg into the hole and let it cook. Then flip it over and flip it one more time. Fry the cutout piece of bread and put that on top and there's a Popeye. I guess that's what it's called because of the way the egg pops through the bread looking like an eye. Fun to cook with your family and to ask about stories behind the food you eat. Mmm. 
The best thing about food that tells a story is the way every bite brings back a piece of that story. Right now, I'm remembering my fifth birthday. <laughs> While I eat and remember, let's meet Marianne Esposito, today's guest storyteller. Hi, Tommy. Ciao, Gabe. It's Marianne Esposito. You know, ciao is that wonderful word in Italian that means hi. But to a lot of people, it also is a slang word that means food. And that's where I come in, because I am a television cook. But I'm a home cook, too. You know, growing up in an Italian family is a very special thing. And for me, I had two grandmothers who were Italian, one from Sicily and one from Naples. Well, this is my kitchen, and this is my grandmother's rolling pin, called a mattarello, what she used when she had to cut pasta. And this is her cleaver. This is what she used for chicken and other cuts of meat. And this is her chitara. It's just a wooden frame with some wires across the top. And she'd put the pasta dough over the top and then use the mozzarella. Over the top it would go and the pasta would be cut underneath the frame. All homemade pasta is is some salt, unbleached flour, eggs, put it all together, and you get pasta. You need to put a little bit of flour on your board. You don't want too much flour because if you have too much flour, you're going to make that dough awful dry. Now when the pasta is as thin as a dime, as my grandmother used to say, or you can see your hand under it, well, then you can put it on the chitara. Then you've got to use a little action here with the mattarello. The idea is to have the wires cut the pasta. And that gives you a beautiful square cut of spaghetti, or something called pasta alla chitara. And now the pasta is ready for the water. So in it goes. And it only takes a minute to cook. Do you have favorite foods? I bet you do. So do I. Mine are pasta, open wide, Tommy, pomegranates, and it's beautiful to look at. I love this fruit. I love cutting into it and seeing thousands of seeds that are just they're sour and they're sweet at the same time. They're wonderful. When I see oranges, I think of the orange story that my grandmothers used to tell me about how they had so many oranges in their satchels when they came on the boat from Naples to New York. Whenever I see those foods, I think of growing up as a kid in an Italian home and what that meant to me. Well, these are my grandma Galasso's old cannoli forms. They're made from the broom handles that she had cut down. You see the dough went around here so you can see the part that was in the frying pan. So the next time you're curious about food, why don't you get in the kitchen with somebody and have them tell you the stories about why they like the special foods that they're making. And why don't you pick out your special foods too? Put them together. You don't need a recipe, you just need a little common sense. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Marianne Esposito. Bye, Tommy. Oh, thanks, Mariuch. That's my nickname for her. Watching her in the kitchen really makes you want to start creating your own special meals, doesn't it? It makes me hungry. Did you finish all the acorns? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs> Will you open it for me? Sure. You know, Tommy, of all the ways you can tell stories, I think food is my favorite. I can tell. <laughs> now let's look at what stories you've cooked up. Everyone has stories to tell, and their own way to tell them. It's about sharing what's in your heart and letting the world know, this is my story. The first memory of my dad making pancakes for us was on Sunday mornings when I was about three or four. It was like a family routine, it was really fun. Making pancakes is really easy. All you have to do is mix the batter, grease the pan, put them in, wait, and let it bubble and have holes in it. Flip them twice and put them in the bowl and eat them. My favorite part about making pancakes is um, making them goofy and uh, not knowing how they're gonna end up. I love making pancakes in the morning because we can all do it as a family in the morning. My favorite pancakes are the kind I made right now. 
the small circular kind. The reason why I like small pancakes so much is because you can pop them in your mouth. I like lots of butter and extra syrup. The best part about pancakes is eating them. So I hope when I get older I can do the same thing with my kids and have fun in the kitchen. I think I'll have some of those cashews Gabe was eating. Uh, it figures. The food's gone, and so is Gabe. Gabe! Gabe! Where'd you learn to make chocolate acorns? My grandma showed me how. Ooh. My grandma showed me how to make ice cubes. Trash souffle. Yeah. Henway! Hmm? Henway? What's a henway? Oh, about six pounds. See, hen is a bird, and it weighs... Uh, <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, Tommy says almost every meal we make or eat has a great story behind it. Mmm, all this chow chatter has me salivating for something symphonic. Yeah. Oh, what'd he say? In other words, hit it! Keep on telling stories! Hey, check out this musical menu! a dish that's brimming with family tales. Tell us more! Everyone throws in what they like. Ooh, and what do you call this incredible concoction? The raccoon rubbish and refuse family fondue. Mm. It must taste like garbage. We wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Shall we mosey back to the music? How's your popcorn? Mmm, delicious. Whenever I eat popcorn, it makes me think about going to the movies with my friends. I know what you mean. For me, whenever I see lemonade, sandwiches, and ice cream, I remember the summer day trips we take down to the beach back when we lived at 26 Fairmount Avenue. The day before we'd go, my mom would tell my brother Buddy and me, boys, we're going to the beach tomorrow. Be sure and get everything ready before you go to bed. Okay, Mom, I said. I raced upstairs and got my bathing suit and towel, then ran outside to get my pail and shovel for playing in the sand. The next morning, we packed the car with all our stuff and lots of good food my mom had made. Then we'd stop at the ice house to buy a block of ice to keep everything cold. And finally, we were on our way. Mom and Dad liked to get there early, so we'd have a good parking place at the far end, right near the bathhouse. The bathhouse was a little building where you could change into and out of your bathing suit. As soon as we got there, my brother Buddy and I would jump out of the car and run to change. Then we ran right down to the edge of the water and waited for Mom and Dad. When we were all together, we'd go into the water and splash and play. Mm, it was cold and salty. I loved it. 
Later, I'd make castles in the sand with my beach bucket until mom called out, lunch time. That's when we'd all get under the big beach umbrella and eat our sandwiches and drink our lemonade. But when lunch was over, it was time for the best part of all. Let's walk down the beach to the boardwalk, Dad would say. Hooray, I said, because I knew this meant we would get ice cream. The only trouble was that on the way back, Mom always said, you have to wait one hour before you can go swimming again. If you don't, you'll get a cramp. We stayed until the sun got lower in the sky. Then we'd pack up, change out of our bathing suits, and get into the car for the drive home, where, of course, I always fell asleep long before we got home to 26 Fairmount Avenue. Hmm, telling that story puts me in the mood for lemonade and ice cream. Will some popcorn do? I'd love some, thanks. Oh. So, what do you think of food as a way to tell stories? Delish. Stories can fill up your heart, but when you tell stories with food, they also fill up your stomach. I'm not full. I'm still hungry. Oh, as <laughs> always. <laughs> Remember, keep telling stories. <laughs> Come on in, Tommy. The popcorn's wonderful. I think I'm going to need a bigger bowl. <laughs> Want some caramel?